Welcome to Designer Digital's Quick Tips for Digital Scrapbooking. This week, how to add photos and shadows to Vintage Frames Part 2 in Photoshop and Elements. Designer Digital's offers a wide array of frame sets which can be used to enhance the look of photos on your scrapbook pages. Many of the frames are designed with custom shadows. Some sets, like Katie Pertit's Vintage Photo Frames, are delivered as PNG frames without shadows. These images are single layer frames with a transparent window. You can use them by positioning your photo behind the window so that the picture peeks through. After dropping the photo into place, you'll add a drop shadow to the framed photo so that it looks like it's attached to the page with the light casting a slight shadow behind it. This makes your project look more realistic and it gives it dimension. But you'll also want to make sure that the photo looks like it's actually printed on the vintage paper of these frames and not just glued underneath it. In the previous tip, we explored one method for doing both. Here's another technique for achieving the same result. Begin by opening a photo and a digital frame in Photoshop or Elements. Use a flat PNG frame with no shadow to play along. For the sample, I'm using one of Katie Pertit's Vintage Photo Frames number 49. Open a piece of digital paper, a scrapbook document, or a new blank document. And then use the Move tool, which is the first tool in the tool bin, to drag the photo onto the new document. And then do the same to drag the frame onto the new document as well. Now I'm going to minimize the frame and the photo windows so that we can just concentrate on the new document. In the Layers panel, drag the photo layer underneath the frame layer, and then reposition the frame and the photo on the document so that the image peeks out from underneath the frame opening. Resize and reposition the photo to make it fit into the frame. You can do this by targeting the photo layer and pressing Ctrl T on your keyboard. On a Mac system, that's Command T. This activates the transform controls. And once you see the bounding box surrounding the photo, you can drag the corner to resize the image. Now, if you're getting a weird funhouse effect where your photo is becoming distorted as you drag, you'll know that you need to hold the Shift key as you drag. In some versions of the software, the shift key is required, and in other versions of the software, it's not. So you'll just know that if your photo is becoming distorted, you need to hold the shift key as you drag. Tick the check mark to confirm the change. If you still have excess photos sticking out from behind the frame, refer to our tip on how to use torn and ripped photo frames to non-destructively mask out the portions of the photo that you don't need. And now you'll want to add a shadow to make the frame look like it's glued to the background. At this point, if you add a shadow to the photo layer, it doesn't show up from behind the frame. But if you add a shadow to the frame layer, the frame looks like it's popped off the page. But I'll zoom in so that you can see that the photo looks like it's glued behind the frame instead of printed on the frame paper. So the problem is how to get the shadow around the frame without getting it inside the frame. Like most things in Photoshop, there are several ways to do this. But here's a way that's different from the previous tip. I'm going to zoom back out and reposition so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to delete that shadow that I created and we'll continue. Add a shadow to the frame layer by double clicking the frame layer outside of the layer name to bring up the layer styles dialog. Under effects, choose drop shadow if you can't see it here. Tick the drop shadow box and then click that tab and then you can tweak the shadow here and click OK. Or you can go to window styles to apply an installed purchased shadow style to the layer. In Photoshop Elements, you'll go to Window Styles and choose Drop Shadow or the name of a purchased shadow set 
from the Layer Styles drop-down menu. Click the shadow that you want to use. Now move the shadow to its own layer. In Photoshop, right-click on the Effects icon on the right side of the frame layer. Choose Create Layer. You'll get a warning, but just click OK. This creates a new layer named Drop Shadow, and it will be under your frame layer. Drag this layer underneath the photo layer. When you do this, the shadow moves into place so that you get the effect you want. It looks like the photo is printed on the paper that's in this frame. Now this will be a little bit different if you're working in Elements. In Elements, your workaround is to copy the frame layer. So let's back up a few steps and we've got the frame layer with the shadow behind it. Select that frame layer and press Ctrl J or Command J on your keyboard and this creates a copy of that shadowed frame layer. Drag the frame copy underneath the photo layer and then go back up to the top layer that has the frame and drag the effects icon to the trash bin in the layers panel. This will be at the top of the layers panel in elements and it deletes the shadow from the frame on the top but it leaves the shadow underneath the frame layer underneath the photo where you want it. Now you can control click or on a Mac system command click the frame, the photo, and the shadow layers in the layers panel. Click the link icon. It'll be at the bottom of the layers panel in Photoshop or to the left of the layers in Elements. And this links all of those layers together. This is important because then if you need to move the frame around on your page, all three of those layers will move together instead of independently and you can keep them perfectly aligned. Whether you prefer this technique or the method in the previous tip, you'll know how to get the vintage look you want with the shadow appropriately placed. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and click the bell below for notifications.